Now let's mention NVIDIA, of course, because that stock is up about three quarters of a percent, over four million shares of volume. This is the world's biggest computer chip company by market value. It's getting a couple of price target hikes. Analysts and teams at UBS and Wolf Research have both up their respective target prices to 150 bucks a share. They're both citing, amongst other things, expected robust demand for NVIDIA's next gen artificial intelligence chips. Company. Why? And Same reason. AI. So I don't know. We, we've got this. This is a proof of concept named Corning because I, now some will say, wait a second, Corning was one of the great performers of the year 2000. Yeah, you know, that's not fair because a lot of the orders were from companies. They were laying fiber everywhere. This is like we're trying to meet demand. OK, but the companies that need it are companies like NVIDIA. And NVIDIA, no, we have two people saying today that the new iteration they announced at their conference, Blackwell, they can't meet demand. Uh, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, UBS takes NVIDIA to 150, prior 120. Jim, TSM, all-time high. The uh, socks up every day last week. TSM was struggling in the 140s because people felt that it was one and done. And then look at this run. I, I know that you could say, well, listen, that's... NVIDIA's up 150%, but this is something because this is a foundry company that makes this stuff, and everyone had been worried about China and the possibility of some sort of invasion had a discount. I don't think anything's changed to make people feel that China might, might, might do something, but the discount is rapidly closing. NVIDIA is in such a crazy position right now wherein the largest corporations in the world are practically waiting at NVIDIA's doorstep for the latest release of their products, and the demand is so great that there are concerns that NVIDIA may have difficulty in meeting that demand. That is certainly a good problem to have. Now let's talk about NVIDIA stock. Recently starting around June 20th and 21st, I told you that I was expecting some softening in NVIDIA's price and chop in the price action, possibly lasting into mid to late July. My reasoning for this was simple. After the annual meeting of stockholders that was held on June 26th, we didn't have any other events to look forward to prior to NVIDIA's next earnings report in August. And also NVIDIA tends to move in cycles of attention. Here is a very basic and simplified graphic to explain what I mean. Typically when NVIDIA reports earnings the entire market is watching NVIDIA like a hawk. Then assuming that results are good, the market continues talking about NVIDIA for a while but then attention surrounding NVIDIA gradually drops as market participants start looking around at the rest of the market and paying attention to other opportunities. The public's focus on NVIDIA usually reaches a relative low about one and a half to two months after earnings. And then the market gradually starts paying more attention to NVIDIA as we get closer and closer to the next earnings report. So as I told you, I was expecting some softening in price and some chop in price action during this period possibly lasting into mid to late July. As I mentioned back then, we also must pay attention to the overall market. If the market pulls back, it will weigh down on NVIDIA and by that same token, if the market moves higher, as it has been recently, then that bodes well for NVIDIA in the shorter. Now, a couple things have happened with NVIDIA recently that I was not expecting. First, a new filing showed that Nancy Pelosi purchased 10,000 shares of NVIDIA stock, which is very bullish. And we also have seen multiple analyst price target upgrades. Honestly, I don't pay too much attention to analyst price targets, and it's important to take price targets with a grain of salt, because they are ultimately just guesses, and the analysts don't know what the future holds. That being said, some market participants do pay attention to analyst price targets, and so price target upgrades therefore provide a positive boost. Going into mid and late July, I think we have conflicting signals. On the one hand, NVIDIA typically reaches a relative low around this point in the cycle between earnings. But on the other hand, you have multiple short-term positive catalysts. Pelosi buying shares, upgraded price targets, and the overall market repeatedly hitting new all-time highs. So I'm cautiously optimistic on NVIDIA in the short term, but personally, I'm just waiting this one out at the moment to see how things play out, and hopefully we'll have more clarity on the situation soon. Now with that being said, I would expect to see pre-anticipatory running in NVIDIA once we enter August as we get closer to the next earnings report and more market participants start paying attention to NVIDIA again. I want to mention something very important as we prepare for NVIDIA's next earnings report, and that is Micron. Micron recently reported earnings and get this. They beat on revenue. They beat on earnings per share. They announced that their HBM, high bandwidth memory product, was sold out for all of calendar year 2024 and 2025. But guidance came in softer than expected and the stock traded lower. So in other words, they had a very, very good quarter. But expectations were so extremely high that even with great results, they fell short of the market's insanely high expectations. And that is something to be aware of as we get closer to NVIDIA's next earnings report. Expectations are just so extremely high right now. As I've mentioned in the past, a very real concern I have about NVIDIA is that at some point growth will likely slow. I don't know when that will happen. For all I know, it might not happen for another 5 or 10 years. I don't know. The analogy I've used in the past to explain this is iPhone upgrade cycles. Think back to the first 10 or so iterations of the iPhone. Back then, enthusiasm and demand were through the roof for each new release because there were massive and distinct improvements from one generation to the next. But now we go from the iPhone 13 to the iPhone 14 and let's be real. 
there's not that big of a difference. Sure, you might have a slightly nicer display and a camera with more megapixels, but there's not that much of a difference between the newer model and the model that preceded it. Another example of this phenomena is video resolution. We go from 480p to 720p, and there is massive improvement. Then we go from 720p to 1080p, and then from 1080p to 4K. And again, both times there are noticeable improvements. But now consumers are looking at 8K displays on the horizon and thinking to themselves, do I really need 8K? 4K resolution is more than enough for most displays. This seems to be a common trend with new technology. And that is my long-term concern when it comes to NVIDIA. Right now, the largest corporations in the world are waiting for the latest generations of NVIDIA's products. And demand is through the roof, which is great for NVIDIA. I just wonder at what point do NVIDIA's clients start thinking to themselves, do we really need the newest models? Again, I don't know when that will happen, but it is a very real concern to be aware of. I think when growth slows, we could see multiple compression in NVIDIA stock. A recent example of rapid multiple expansion and subsequent multiple compression is Zoom stock. Zoom soared in the early days of the pandemic as lockdowns ensued and people started working remotely. And Zoom stock began trading at many, many multiples of future earnings. Then as the pandemic subsided and the economy reopened, Zoom stock experienced multiple compression and dropped roughly 90% in price. And keep in mind, the underlying business was doing well and continued growing during this time, even as the stock fell in price. Why did this happen? Because the rate of growth slowed and market participants perceived a less aggressive expansion of the company moving forward, and so they applied a much tighter multiple to the company's stock. Now, please do not misunderstand me here. I'm not saying that NVIDIA is going to drop 90% or that NVIDIA is the next Cisco. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I am saying is that it's important to be aware that NVIDIA is now trading at many multiples of future earnings. And if we see forward-looking guidance start to soften, then I would genuinely be concerned about what happens next in the stock. That being said, for right now, NVIDIA is crushing it. Demand for their products is through the roof, and they may run into difficulty meeting that demand, which again, is a good problem to have. I'm cautious as we approach NVIDIA's next earnings report simply because there's a lot of euphoria surrounding NVIDIA and AI right now and expectations are just so extremely high, not only for earnings but also for forward-looking guidance. That said, who knows, maybe NVIDIA will have another knockout quarter and smash through current estimates. For now, I'm more so on the cautiously optimistic side of things. I'm curious to know your thoughts on NVIDIA in the comments below. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.